Okay, you guys, our next video. Ten mistakes people make on electricity, very important. Listen up, pay attention, and the last one could save your life. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay, you guys. Ten electrical mistakes not to make. <laughs> take for granted. People take electricity for granted way too much. Shutting off the power. Shut it off. Um, don't figure, I'm going to work on electricity and you didn't shut off the power. Find a way to shut off the power, okay? Changing outlets, taking a photo is fine. You're putting the wiring back the way you found it, hopefully. The possible, not necessarily a mistake you made is the person before you could have made a mistake and put the wiring back the wrong way. So finding some kind of uh, outlet tester, this was a fancy one, they sell ones for like $15 that test uh, ground, hot, neutral, reverse, things like that, open, hot, uh, open ground, open, neutral, and that would help you know if you got the wiring correct, okay? So testing it, even though you took a photograph, it's nice taking the photograph, it's actually very clever. Having a little tester, outlet tester is a good idea. I'll have to put a video on that. The link for that video in, okay? A pen versus a multimeter. Enough people tell me they're really good electricity. My, pretty much most of the time my first question is, what do you use to test electricity? And they'll show me this. And I'll be like, do you have a meter? And they say no. And my first thought immediately is, you ain't as good as you think you are. This is a great tool. I've took it for granted before. It's inexpensive. It's very quick. It can find a hot wire, live wire very fast because it doesn't need to touch a bare wire. So if things are all painted the same inside the junction box, everything got overheated, all the wires are... Uh, dark gray, blackish, dark brown, for whatever reason, you can't tell which is what. This is extremely versatile. can also help you tell you if you got the power off uh, in an outlet, uh, a junction box, or something like that. Okay, so very, very versatile, very inexpensive, very handy, and I used to take this for granted. I'm guilty of that. This does all kinds of diagnostic. This will never even come close. Much more expensive and you're not as good electricity if you don't understand how to use this and do diagnostic uh, properly okay small for instance we got a disconnect for all the uh, furnaces here and one of the first things I do is make sure I have correct power going to the contactor 110 120 on both sides of the bottom and coming out this way I can eliminate the contactor as an issue and if I got that going on and I got the proper current coming out of that when I either the solenoid goes in from the 24 volts from the thermostat or I push it in manually to test the contactor there's no ants inside stuff like that then next step I will go to the capacitor if the compressor is not running but just changing capacitor and not testing to see if it's the contactor now next 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 step I see a lot of people say the same contactor proper ways to test the voltage okay do proper diagnostic okay um, there is a proper way to remove an outlet you remove the hot first so the device is not hot anymore if for some reason you forget to disconnect the power or somebody tells you it's off and it's not off and you don't have or an outlet tester, a form to test outlets, so you move the hot first and then neutral in the ground. When you reconnect it, you reconnect it reverse, ground, neutral, and finally hot. So everything is not hot or live until you finally put that hot wire on. Okay, usually you might even see a tiny spark if it's not carrying any load. Okay. Okay. Water, electricity, do not mix. <laughs> I had a clown 
started brand new in the building and we had a leak and I couldn't see inside the wet wall and it was leaking on top of me I wasn't allowed it, it was uh, in the roof uh, in the lobby and it was coming from the upstairs apartment and I asked him if he had a light a flashlight or something and he decided to give me an extension cord with a socket with two bare wires plugged into the extension cord with a bulb I said in so many unnice words for him to remove that out of my sight and he understood me real quick so water and electricity do not mix another situation months ago I explained to someone that the 300 amp panel service panel for the three units had wasp inside and that person was well, how come you didn't spray it even though it's the oil for electricity can transfer through it or it's partially liquid water partially chemicals oil whatever it is you don't take a chance um, it's one thing hitting an outlet it's another thing hitting in a 300 amp panel with two bus bars in there and bypassing breakers <laughs> um, wasn't a very smart question of that person I didn't even bother replying so I'm letting you know water liquids electricity do not mix period okay don't work on anything that's hot alive just because some of us do we're trained for it. we have certain types of equipment we understand the difference between line and load we can test amperage see if a line is carrying the load stuff like that if you're unsure of those terms you should not be working life don't cut more than one wire you can cut these there's nothing here connecting anything but I've seen it twice the other day <laughs> last week one of the employees here was having trouble removing the wire nuts and he saw some fresh uh, wires and he's gonna just cut it up and peel off the insulation put new wire nuts and even though I shut off the switch for the light I, I told him one wire at a time because the neutral could still have current going through it if it's connected to other neutrals which I've seen too many times current is going back to that panel on the neutral and you can create a condition you don't want to create three-way switches are allowed residential here in this part of Virginia to have white wires that are actually carrying current through to the three-way switch mm -hmm. one wire at a time Oh, it's a low voltage, Vic. It's not uh, a big deal. I might get a tiny little shock. I'm not going to light anything up. You could burn out a fuse, transformers, control boards, complete control. <laughs> um, one wire at a time. But they are proper devices for aluminum and copper. Aluminum is CO slash ALR. Copper usually does it might say copper on it. There's a different expansion rate between copper and aluminum. Copper gets hot, um, doesn't expand as, as much, and doesn't expand as fast. Aluminum expands more and faster, and for that reason, the screws, set screws on there, tend to get looser faster and they will tend to arc on aluminum much more so than copper so make sure you use the proper device if you have aluminum wiring if you have copper you're almost always good to go if you have aluminum wiring make sure you're safe with that okay you can mix aluminum and copper with a proper wire nut it costs ten dollars a piece here they're purple they got this gooey stuff inside for corrosion and stuff like that i do not like that stuff at all but seems to be cold over here is definitely necessary and you're not allowed to use or mix copper and aluminum without such a device that's rated for that okay such a wire nut or something like that okay very 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 important it's against cold
four reasons. Proper breakers for for the gauge. 14 gauge uses 15 amp breakers. 12 gauge, even though it's a smaller number, it's a thicker wire. You can put 20 amp breakers on there. You're tripping a breaker in the bathroom. 14 gauge wiring, and you want to put a 20 amp breaker. You're gonna heat up that wire sooner or later. And as possibility, you can melt the insulation off. They could stick together. You can cause an arc, a spark, even a fire, property damage, so on and so forth. Don't do it. It's against cold where I'm from up north. I do not know the cold here. I don't do it. And I don't recommend it. Resetting breakers. If you reset a breaker once, twice, you're good. You're okay. If it keeps tripping and the second you reset it, leave it alone. Call someone who's qualified who can help you out find out what the issue is. A walk around this might be unplug everything in the house or everything that's on that circuit if you can find out what's on that circuit. Usually it'll be for two rooms, maybe a bathroom, uh, upstairs, downstairs, things like that. And then if the breaker resets and you start plugging things in and one item trips that breaker, it's either that device is plugged into that outlet, uh, that switch, or that light fixture or something else. Okay, it could even be search protectors. Don't have the best lust for search protectors. <laughs> for some reason, they tend to trip breakers. With these arc four breakers here and aluminum wiring, it can be tricky at times. So that might be a walk around on that one, okay? Holiday lights outside. Hmm. I see a lot of the controls are rated for per se wet conditions. They have a little timer on there, stuff like that. I uh, might even have a photo cell. But the stuff that gets plugged into it, I don't see have much rating. So something to consider uh, with holiday lights and wet conditions. Stay safe, okay? Don't ground yourself out. Probably the most important one I got here. <laughs> Don't start handling a uh, service panel with two hands. One on bare metal, same thing on bare metal on that panel, especially if it's metal. Some of the one of the wires could have came loose, could be touching that panel, and it could the electricity could be running through the panels to the ground. And you don't know that. Um, there isn't necessarily even a way to test that. This might pick up a reading on the out of the panel, but always one hand uh, gloves, even highly recommended for myself and other people. About two years ago, I was working on exterior condensing unit for AC, and I noticed didn't have any voltage. And I checked the disconnect. There was no breakers inside that controlled that. They controlled the HVAC unit upstairs, the furnace, the thermostat, and but the outside, being 240, had its own exterior breaker in the in the outside panel, 300 amp service. And I decided not to ground myself out as usual. Sometimes I'll put a hand in the pocket. And I went to go trip that breaker, and it went off like a gun. 25, 32 caliber, I, it, it, such a loud enough pop. <laughs> I called the electrician immediately, waited for them to come. They showed me the 10 gauge wiring, 30 amps. It was three of them. Two of them were fused together. The insulation casing got melted. It just got so hot. It gets hot here. Uh, usage, compressor could be pulling too much current. It's burning out. And things like that and he uh, changed the wires put in his pigtails extra junction box whatever he had to do no problem with the panel bus bars had to change the breaker we were good to go but because I didn't ground myself out I used one hand I didn't electrocute myself now don't take it for granted the higher the voltage the more it can transfer to you it can arc to you to you towards you so I was lucky enough everything was covered in metal and I just kind of extended myself something didn't feel right and sure enough my feeling was correct don't be standing in the puddle in the water start handling service panel 
<laughs> okay, uh, things like that. Okay, like I said, one of my best tricks is put one hand in your pocket on right hand. I use right hand most of the time. Other other ways, if my gloves are not wet, I use a set of gloves so I don't ground myself out. This is my favorite way not to ground myself out. Okay, I think I got as much covered as I could. Any questions, just ask. And be safe out there, okay? It's very, very important. See you guys in the next one. Bye.